Hi everyone, you are watching another episode of Behind the Pen. I'm your host, Karina Gantis, entrepreneur, radio host, podcaster, author of 13 books, and mm, what else? Mm, I'm sure there's something else to put on that list. Uh, my guest today is Carol Cassandra, or Cassandra, I think. Cassandra? Is that, Carol Cassandra, uh, is that correct? Uh, there we go. Here don't we go. Worry. Everybody mispronounces it. Yeah, because I, I don't know. I, I think I wrote it in my book as Cassandra as well. Anyway, um, how how are you, and where are you in this big world? Uh, I'm doing uh, good today. Just it's a slow moving Monday, but uh, I come from a little small town in Ringgold, Virginia, and. Well, I said small town, it's a little bit small town. Really ain't nothing much to do around here. Like I said, I'm a homebody anyway, except I like to get on, maybe go shopping every once in a while. But on that, I just, it's a quiet small town. Just nothing too exciting happens around here. The local community, everybody's real nice. What's the population where you are then when you say it's a small town? Any ideas of your population? I want, I'd say maybe just like a few thousand. I don't know the exact estimate, just a few thousand. Yep. Wow. Because I kind of live on the edge of uh, Danville because uh, I'm only about five minutes away from the city area. So, yeah, I love uh, my little hometown, even though, like I said, just really ain't much, much to do around here. You, um, the accent is so strong. Are you South or North Virginia? It's us uh, south, and uh, we live Virginia. kind of close to the North Carolina border. Right ah, on the edge of it. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, let's start. Behind the Pen is a program for anyone who picks up a pen. Musicians, um, writers, screenplays, um, authors, whatever. So what is, it, uh, what is it you do? do you, are you an author? Do you have books published? Are you a ghostwriter? Are you an editor? What sort of uh, things do you do with your pen? Well, I'm an author and a writer, and uh, let's see, I've, I've written uh, several books, and I wrote uh, Going Home Again. That was the very first book I ever wrote, and then, of course, I got the West War series, which I describe as a romance novel meets uh, soap opera, and I've got about eight volumes in that. I'm working on number nine right now. Well, that's and a good plus, series. Yeah, it really is. And plus, I've also participated in a few anthologies. And aside from writing books, I also do some uh, freelance writing too. And I write for like this uh, gossip site, writing all about the news in Hollywood and celebrities. And just, just wow. kind of quite there lately. But where of course, you, I find this something to write about because you where, know, where do you get your, your research? Where do you get your research for your? your subject matter that you're writing about with these Hollywood stars? Well, of course, you know, the Google, and of course, there's always something going on, like the tabloids pouring on, oh, the celebrity couples getting divorced, or this new couple's hooking up, and then, of course, uh, I write a whole lot about the Kardashian family, and they've always got something going on, so it's never a dull moment with them. I'm a huge, huge fan of Harry Styles. And he is the first male, single male, to be on the cover of Vogue. And uh, I am so proud of him. Of uh, He's actually on, on the cover. I'm not sure if he's wearing the dress or he's uh, just in um, trousers. I'm not sure what the cover actually is. But he is in a dress in one of the shots um, because he's... He doesn't really care, you know, he, he doesn't give himself uh, a, a name. Um, he doesn't uh, class himself as uh, bi and gay and um, queer or um, uh, transvestite or anything like that. He doesn't exactly. think anyone should be labelled. And he's, he's just, I, I just admire him so much. I love his songs as well and uh, I'm a Larry Shipper I'm 100% sure that he's married to Louis Thomason and has been for the last 10 years I could go into this forever but let's get go oh. back to have you ever wrote about him though in your column no I haven't wrote any uh, stories about that here yet I mean, like so oh the God. main celebrities I write about is like the Kardashians then of course I write some about uh, 
Bri and Nikki Bell, the Bell Twins, they used to be Brad Swords, now they're uh, reality stars. Then, let's see, I'm trying to, then uh, Jennifer Aniston, and uh, of course, uh, Jessica Simpson, a couple of those celebrities, those are some of the main ones I write about, but I haven't gotten around to write anything about Harry yet. If you ever want to know anything, you come see me, because I know everything. <laughs> I'm a big, big Larry Ship and a big Harry yeah, Styles fan. But uh, yeah, he's he's the Vogue that's coming out. I think December issue. Um, he's the first male to actually be on the front by himself, which I think is is, is yeah, amazing. Milestone for him. Yeah. So let's um talk about your first book. Um, when did that come out? Your first one. Let's see. I think I started writing that about. 2009 and so it was published but and it was really published in 2010 by a little small romance uh, publisher and so I stayed with them I'd say maybe about a year or so but then mm -hmm. I decided to pull my book and go ahead with self-publishing it and so I think I re-published uh, <clears throat> Going Home Again I think it's moved around 2012, 2013 is when I self-published it because it took me a while to do the editing, of course, format and the cover and everything. You changed, I mean, did they do the cover, the small press, or did you have a cover yourself when you went to them? Well, when I was really published with them, they had a... Uh, Someone do a cover. Yeah, design, yeah, but then when I decided to self-publish it myself, you had I to get design, a new one. Yeah. Mm. You, I mean, I haven't seen your book, so I, I, I love this show because I know absolutely nothing about my guests. So I, I haven't seen your books, I haven't seen your covers. Um, have you used the same cover designer for your full series? And was it the same cover designer as your first book? Well, I've been uh, like redesigning my covers recently with the help of a very talented author and designer. Her name's Yasmin Korea, and she's from all offers publishing house and she's a very talented uh, writer and designer so i anybody who's listening i'd say please check her out because she's very talented and she's been helping me with redesign my covers and she does a great job of understanding the concept i'm going for mm. and what i want that's amazing when you can actually give your idea over and it comes back exactly how you want it this is what I loved about my cover designer, Sharon Lipman from Fantasia Cover Designs. I gave her the, the idea of what I wanted. Uh, two drafts later, I've got it. And it's just spectacular. And it's so good when you can find a cover designer that understands you and knows your concept. Um, when you do a series, you've got to have some similarity going through each cover. Is it for you colors or text? or the font? What, what is it that, that brings them all together as a series on the covers? I think just like uh, maybe the colors and plus, you know, symbolism, because uh, I want for each, uh, for each uh, volume in the Westmore series, you know, there's a theme that goes with it. So the main thing is I want to have like uh, a symbol that reflects what's going on in there. So of course, I like to use roses those and pearls, like a pearl necklace. That's kind of like my signature for the series. So, right. So. I was going to say, is there like a signature? Do you have an author logo or branding? I do have an author logo. And again, uh, Yasmin, she designed it for me. And uh, if you go to my Facebook page, I got it has the profile picture and it's uh it has like a white background with a little crack and then it's got rose petals sprinkled all around it which signifies like the romance and drama aspects of the book so I write. Beautiful and and do you have like um uh, a tagline for your branding? I really don't have a tagline per se just no. uh, no, I, I just kind of like, you know, romance and drama right now, that's like the main genre, right? And of course, it, my books, they tend to have a soap opera feel. And so I always describe my books kind of like a literary soap opera in a way. So I guess literary, maybe that could be dramatic, my Yeah, literary, dramatic, romance author. <laughs> that sounds good. I think I'm going to use that. <laughs> so what got you into writing? I mean, when did it you first start having ideas of wanting to write that first book? 
just, you know, like a grown up, you know, I always loved reading, but I'd say it's maybe around my high school years when I decided to I got interest in writing and I took a creative writing class and I enjoyed it so much. I'm like, well, maybe this is something I'd like to do, make a career out of. And so I graduated college and, you know, I, fig I took a little break to decide what I wanted to do. That's when I just, I got the idea for going home again because to be honest, I really wasn't that much of a romance reader, but then I started reading a few Harle Harlequin novels and that gave me the inspiration <laughs> to maybe try my hand at it. So that's a, so that's when I started to get the idea for going home again. That's when I put pen to paper and started writing my first uh, book. How much of yourself did you put in that first book? Well, I'd say I've been put to, because uh, some of the characters in the book, you know, they're based on uh, my family members, of course, uh, the, in the first book, there's a character named Edie, she's uh, the the heroine's grandma, and she's based off of my own grandma, because she loves to cook and bake and keep the house clean, but she can be a little bit worrisome at times, too, but She's always preaching about the importance of family, so I based her off my own grandma. That's awesome. Is she, is she around? Does she know that? She passed away about uh, two years ago, but uh, you know, I told her I based the case. She saw the book. Yeah, think, uh, she was, yeah, she was a little bit surprised, but I think she loved it. What about what about your own experiences? Uh, they, I mean, they always say, especially with your first book, to write about what you know. Um, your book coming, is it coming home or going home? Uh, going home again. Going home again. Uh, any experiences that uh, you had, you've put in that book? Yeah, of course, you don't have to say which ones, but I'm just saying, did you actually put any of your experiences in there? Let's see. Well, I did uh, like, like that. Some of my family experiences, because uh, the character, the main character's name is Rachel, and you know, she was very close to her mom, and so. And of course, you know, I'm close with my mom, so I based uh, like uh, Rachel and her mother's relationship on one I have with me and my mom. Good one. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we definitely have a good relationship, but no job or anything. Plus, you know, I still live at home with her, and I help uh, take care of her, so we're, we got a close bond. That's so cute. That's so good. So um, tell me the blurb. I mean, tell me what your first book is about. Well, the first book, uh, the character's name is uh, Rachel Mitchell. She lives in New York and she's a fashion photographer for a big magazine. And she's originally from Virginia. So she gets news that a uh, family tragedy has happened. So she goes back to Virginia for the <clears throat> to help out her grandmother and her sister, so they start reconnecting. And so, also during her trip, she runs into her ex-boyfriend. I was Ashton, waiting for who, that. <laughs> I was yeah. waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, I was because it's a story about family and uh, romance. But uh, she runs into Cole, and so they start reconnecting and talking. And before long, she questions like what her life would have been if she stayed in Virginia, married. Uh, Cole, and then she questions whether she's happy in New York, and so she starts to bang whether she should stay in New York and continue to fly for, if she should take a chance and go back to Virginia and be with her family and be with Cole. So it's kind of like a sweet uh, second chance romance. Oh, I hope she chose the right thing. I hope you followed her. I, I would have, me, I would have had her go back to New York because she's so successful over there and him actually following her, but she doesn't know that he's coming. I thought, I, that's the way I would go. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many ways that I could have went, but, uh, you know, I ended up uh, go. I think I ended up going with the perfect ending for it. Brilliant. But that was what you came up with was a good idea. That was your, that's your first standalone. You haven't done, except for the um, short stories you've done in anthologies, that was your first standalone novel, yeah. Yeah, that's my first uh, standalone. Like I said, the rest is just uh, the uh, volumes, of course, had the short stories and some anthologies, too. So, um, 
what were you like uh, i mean what were you like at school what was it like were you were you happy at school did you enjoy your lessons what was your favorite lesson was it english <laughs> Well, believe it or not, in school I was a little bit uh, shy and, you know, I didn't like it when the teachers called on me to no. answer questions. Did yeah, you never put like, your hands up? Please... Well, except for like uh, maybe English, I did uh, raise my hand up a little. You, you enjoyed that from books. the beginning now? Enjoyed yeah, I really did. From... What, uh, what's one of your, if, if you can think back to that time, what was one of your favorite books you read? really inspired you to want to become a writer i'm trying to i had so many during that time of course growing up i'll i read all the fairy tales and then of course you know in high school you know i started reading uh to kill a mockbird bird and that's one of the first stories i really liked and connected with because mm. it's one of the ones that captured my attention and kind of maybe gave me the inspiration to maybe and figure out maybe going to ride and wow good and who's your favorite author now uh, i have so many um let's see i like colleen hoover uh, of course i've gotten hooked on her books but then of course i like debbie may Homer too so i'd say maybe those two they're my two favorite authors at the moment and then of course the... you know i've read a whole bunch of other indie authors too so Robert That's Vance good. and J.C. Wing and I got hooked on their books too. J.C. Wing, yeah I know her. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> She's a good writer, I love her stories. Um, the uh, the two favorite authors that you just picked, they're from uh, they're romance authors? Uh, yes ma'am. Do you, do you go more for like modern romance or do you like the historical as well to read? I mean, I tend to read kind of like more modern romance kind of set in this time, although I've, I have read a few historical romances in the past, but I think it's just to get into a historical romance, it just has to be like a time period I like, and plus it's got to get my interest. Just I, I got to connect to the characters. I read, I read historical romances because my mom was just addicted to them. And um, there was this author, she had um, three different pen names, but one of the names is Victoria Holt, really famous. And her books were so easy to read you, that you had, it was a page turner. You started, you couldn't put it down. And it was done in um, Victorian times and the English courts and stuff like that. And it's all romance and, you know, I like stuff like that. What about, um, films are you into um romance com romance comedy and uh historical maybe old the old classics what what do you enjoy let's see i do kind of like some romance uh, movies i like kind of like the romance comedies where hijinks and sue has a girl and a guy try to get together and i do like to watch like uh, some hallmark movies because they have like the sweet romance with the couples reconnecting or like they're enemies but then they become friends and uh, romance starts between them so I like the romance movies that kind of tugs at your heartstrings and it's a feel-good romance you can watch on a like on a weekend trouble up on the couch. I think uh, Sandra Bullock she's amazing in romantic comedies. Oh, I love her. Yeah. And, and she's one of my favorite actresses. Really? One of the, really that one she did with uh, Hugh Grant, oh, 24, what was it called, 24? Two weeks notice. That two is, weeks that's notice, nice. that's it, oh, yeah. the 24, where did I get 24 from? Yeah, that that's a classic romantic comedy, I think. Oh, she could do romance, and she could do any type of movie, but I kind of like her romance roles. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's such a good actress. Uh, I really, really enjoy Sandra Bullock. I'm trying to think. Who else does romantic comedies? He's famous. I know Julie Roberts, she did a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, My Best Friend's Wedding and Runaway Bride. Yeah, Notting and, Hill. Yeah, Notting Hill. That was a good one I liked. I, I know, I like Hugh Grant. <laughs> I think he's just so good in romantic comedies. Oh, and then you have, of oh, course. The oh my gosh, it was turned from a book, best-selling book, to Bridget Doe's Diary. 
Oh, those Colin pretty fists. Firth. Oh, I love those. Colin Firth. Oh. What about, I mean, Colin Firth in Pride and Prejudice. I mean, do you watch those classics, but the modern version of the classics? I haven't gotten around to watching <gasps> them like yet. No! I know. I haven't gotten around to it. Just, oh I'm my trying God. to. Like You've got to get it on Netflix and see if they have any. Oh, fantastic. Um, Emma, um, Pride and Prejudice. Um, oh, gosh. Something House. Oh, I have to remember them all. I've got them all on DVD. I'm absolute. I love them. For me, that's a romance story. I love the romantic comedies, but that is romance where the the guy doesn't want her or acts like he doesn't want her. Yeah, I know how that is. The yeah, guy does yeah. act like he wants her. Exactly. Kind of like hard get that. in a way. So um, you you you're on. Uh, you said book six or seven of your series. I'm working on number nine right now. We've already got wow. eight published. And what is connecting them all together? Is it about one family and you have um, every book has its own little story to do with the family? Or how how well, is it? This, well, it's got a large uh, cast of characters, I'll tell you that much. It's about uh, three families. you got the Braxtons. They're kind of like the rich family in town they live in a mansion and the dad owns his own publishing company nice and then you got uh the greens then you got the Reynolds. they kind of like middle class so mm -hmm. you have like all the characters you know they're friends or they connect in some place and then of course you got some romance happening between the different families uh, which some other characters may not like so so each of uh, Fine, but it progresses from the next, and so there's family secrets are revealed, and new romances that begin. And plus, you got a few uh, characters return, or new characters popping up to cause trouble. So it's always See, something going on. That for, for for me, that kind of plot, I could go through maybe three books. How have you stretched it to nine books? <laughs> Where are these ideas coming yeah. from? Just the ideas just keep coming, and of course, you know, I was a soap opera fan, and so I watched them and got some inspiration of like storylines that um, intrigue people. And I try to keep it kind of like realistic, I won't have anything too crazy, like characters popping up from the dead about 10 times or, <laughs> <laughs> or turning evil or de the devil's taking them over. I mean, that, that's like a, a, that was a soap opera I used to watch. I can't even remember what it's called. Oh, something days, something, something of our days. That it, it started off okay, but and it got so repetitive. And then they went into that ridiculous storyline of her being possessed by the devil and ah, oh, just gave up. But uh, what is your favorite soap opera then to, to watch? Uh, the first one I ever watched was uh, The Bold and Beautiful on uh, CBS. And I started watching it when I was a kid. And my mom and my aunt got me hooked on it because I never understood why they watched it. But then one day I just sat down and watched it with them. And so I much got drama. It. it really is. Although so I have to admit, these days it's just kind of. It's gotten a little bit too silly because currently they have a storyline where this guy, he's in love with a mannequin. I kid you not, that's what's happening on it now. Okay, I think they need to find some new writers. I think They're, they need to find plus, some fresh blood. <laughs> they really do because, you know, I see some fans going on and they're complaining about the storyline. They say, this is one of the worst storylines I've ever seen. They need to get rid of the producers, writers, make somebody in on to save exactly. the show. Exactly, they need fresh blood. It's, it's, it's really disappointing when someone like yourself, who's been following them for years, and the plastic surgery these poor actors and actresses have had to go through to carry on oh doing goodness. their, their uh, series, to, to have it being ruined. Yeah, that's something by... I would never do plastic surgery, no, no. You can't, I mean, if you look at him from from 10 years ago and oh, 15 years ago, now look at him now, he's yep. no different. There's no recourse. No. 
just I don't see how anybody could do that to the face that don't even look human no more. <laughs> they look like a mannequin. The freaking actors and actresses look like a mannequin. My gosh. Oh, my so, so what about um, something new that's come up on TV that you started watching? Let's see. I'm trying to think. Well, I haven't gotten around to watching any shows, but one show I want to watch is Tiger King. I've heard everybody talking about it. I haven't gotten into it yet. No, this is I've never heard of that. Thing. It's a show on Netflix. It's about this guy named Joe Exotic. He runs like a, a zoo for exotic uh, cats, wild cats, and he's got a, a centric uh, character, I'll tell you that much. And then oh. he's got this, and then he's had a feud with this woman named Carol Baskin, and he accused her of uh, killing her husband and uh, burying him in the septic tank on her property, or either feeding her husband to her <laughs> tiger. It's crazy. Ah. See, I love anything. I'm about, a big mafia fan. I mean, the novel I'm working on now is a dark romance, uh, romance uh, mafia thriller. And I love anything to do with the Mafia and, and Godfather. I've watched them all. And uh, yeah, I love, I love stuff like that. But I've never heard of that one. I'll have to check that one out. What about... Yeah, because everybody talk about it, but I just don't get around to it. Everybody says, it's crazy. You just need to watch it. you got to watch it. If they say you got to... If, if more than one person tells you to watch something, you give it at least a go with one episode. And if you don't like it, you don't watch it anymore. Just you know. turn it off, yes. There's so many new series on Netflix and on TV now that uh, you just don't have the time to watch them all. It's ridiculous. You, you it really is. They got so many shows off. But then, but then well, they have one... a hard one, time to watch them. Well, that's it. And then they have one season. You binge watch it because it's amazing. And the season finishes and it, you never find season two ever again. Yep. That's the one thing I like is when you get hooked on a show, but then they cancel it after the first season. They really don't give it a chance. Exactly. I mean, they should know that people have been watching it. They should have uh, uh, the numbers. They should know it's worth it to carry on. Can't just do exactly. one season and stop. Not fair. So what are you doing after book nine? Are you going to continue on? Or are you going to try something new? Are you going to step in a new genre? Are you, you know, are you ready for that? Do you think something, stay, stay in the romance, but add some thriller in it to it, maybe? No, supernatural. Yeah, well, I, like that. I'm, even though I write romance, you know, I've uh, always said that I've been, I would be interested in trying like other genres and I've always thought about write, maybe writing a romantic suspense series or just a plain novel maybe with uh, the and I got this idea the story idea of a uh, porter she gets into trouble and so it's up to a handsome cop to help her and track down who's trying to That's kill her and aside from and aside from yeah, like you romance can... you know I've thought about writing more crime or maybe horror stories so yeah. I got some ideas forming into my head so anything's possible so That's just cool. to, That's no, cool. no one's going to come up out. with it's, um, I started off with MC thrillers, like, um, badass motorbike, uh, groups and, and gangs and stuff. And then I went into fantasy and then I went into dystopian sci-fi and then I've gone into erotica and now I've gone into mafia. I was just, you know, when you get that idea and it, it sticks in your head and you know, you're not going to sleep unless you get that out, you know. Uh, it's just bugging you all the time, the storyline, the characters, you have to write that book. It's telling you, you have to write that book. Even if it's something totally different than what you've been doing, something is telling you to write that book. Exactly, because it just pops to your head and you just got to run with the idea and just uh, go with it. And if it works out, it works out. So what, what do you think inspires you? gives you your ideas i think like my family you know they help uh, as far as some of the characters in my books and just like the family dynamic because we're very close and i got two brothers and they love to pick on me and 
I got one character in my book. She has uh, three brothers, and she's always getting picked on. So I kind of based that on uh, like the, my dynamic with my family. So that kind of gives me a uh, inspiration for the characters in my books. But what about the storylines? I mean, they have to change every time as you go through a new book. Uh, do you get your ideas when you're dreaming? I mean, is it life that helps you? Something you've read, something you've seen on TV? Well, I do like to watch like some crime shows. And like I said, of course, you know, soap operas, I watch them, so they gave yeah. me a huge inspiration. Yeah. But then I also like to watch the crime shows, and so that started to give me the inspiration of maybe trying to write my hand out of crime or a suspenseful mystery story. Why so. not? I say go for it. Once you've done book nine, unless you've got book ten already in your head, I'd say go for that uh, romantic thriller or um, crime romance uh, and see see where it goes, see where it takes you, see if you get that if you get that urge, you know, when you're in the zone, you know what that feels like, yeah? Exactly. When you're yeah, in the zone. Yeah, because I'm more fun than the story right at the end. That's it. If you wake up and you, you get that notepad and pen beside you and you start writing at six o'clock in the morning, you've got to do it, you know. Do you, do you carry a pen exactly. and a pad around with you if, if you go out anywhere in case you're inspired or you've got a dictaphone or anything like that? Well, I always got like a, I got my little notebook and my pencil and pen. I got that in my nightstand drawer in case I get an idea during the middle of the night and then of course you know when I'm out in public and an idea hits me I just pull out my phone and just type up my idea on the notepads. Ah that's yes, good. I've I've always never thought about using my phone. Ideas, I would not forget it. Yeah no I've never thought about using the phone. I, I used to back when because I've been writing for 27 years I used to have a dictaphone and I'd be walking around the supermarket and I'd get this idea and I'd whip my dictaphone out. I'd start talking into this cassette player and everybody's looking at me really strange because I'm just saying a sentence or two or an idea. And, you know, everyone's like, <laughs> you know, well, it's just really <laughs> weird. But then we are very weird as writers. We are, we, we're, it's, writing is a lonely business, but we like to talk it, to it our characters, be. don't we? Yeah, and plus they always uh, give us plenty to talk about. They they yeah. certainly do. They certainly do. We um we have to listen to to what they tell us, and uh, some of them can be really uh, um, demanding. Let's put it that way. Exactly. Oh, I have plenty <laughs> that I <was> demanded. <laughs> And I'm like, please just give me a break. I need to relax. <laughs> so, so let me ask you: Are you um, have you gone wide with your books, or, or are you just an Amazon uh, author? Just the Amazon, on the, and of course, I have like a few of them on uh, Kobe and uh, Smashwords and Barnes and Noble. So I want so to try to get them to like. So you are wide. So you're not on a Kindle Unlimited. Yeah, because. Uh, Amazon, you know, I've heard a bunch of all offers, you know, they've been like complaining about how Amazon is doing for royalties and everything. So I just kind of want to spread my books to other sites. That way it's not just like, limited to only That's Amazon. That's it. That's it. That's why I use uh, draft to digital because uh, you upload your, your book, your ebook, and it just goes out everywhere to maybe 15 different uh, platforms and it's done and it's finished. And uh, it gives your readers the opportunity to buy from somewhere else and not have that amazon link stuffed in their face you know yeah and it's it's, it's really not fair uh, on um especially the small uh, places but uh, amazon has monopoly it always has it always will um, it really is. uh we we are just using them as a bookshelf and we have no uh, what's the word I'm looking for? No authority. They can take our books off. They can remove our reviews, which they have been doing. Yeah, I noticed that. A whole bunch of readers and authors have been saying Amazon's pulling their reviews or their we've got no standing behind all the royalty statements exactly. and everything. We, we've got no standing. We, there's no legal legal thing to help us when it comes to amazon we're just using them as a bookshelf well the same thing with uh, facebook really 
Yeah. I mean, I got I got threatened my author page to be uh, taken down because oh uh, yeah, I've never seen it. it was like a big black and red warning sign came up, and I was like, what the, you know? And and it just goes to show that uh, they can do anything they want, and you have no leg to stand on. So mm. you know, there's it's really difficult for independent authors to 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 have any authority with their books. We have to uh, promote where we can. We have to um, use what we can to, to get our books out there and um, just keep our fingers crossed that uh, they don't close our pages or take our books off. Yeah, that's the only thing you can do at this day and age being a writer. It's, uh, and of course, we're, we're in that, for those that don't know, today is the 16th of November 2020, and we are going through the second wave of the coronavirus that has killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Um, for those, this is like for later in history. Um, we are in lockdown, we're, we're, we're in our house, we can't go out without permission, um, we have to um, wear masks everywhere we go, and as authors, we can no longer go out and do book signings and go to book conferences, where that's where authors make their sales with the one-on-one -on -one chatting mm -hmm. with the reader. Sign the book and you're off. And that's where the sales come from. And so a lot of authors that use the outside world for sales are now having to learn how to promote their books virtually. And it's not easy, um, but really how, how, I mean, how are you doing with it? Have you always done your promotion online or have you gone to these conferences? I mean, how did you sell your book? I've never been to like any conferences or any of the book signs, although that's something I really want to do. And I hope in like, once this pandemic is over and things start to go back to normal, maybe I can attend some signings. But that would be cool. Throughout, it really will. But throughout most of my career, you know, I've been doing just my promoting online because I promote on Facebook, Twitter, and even Instagram. And, and plus, and you know, I've already. You find in you find in you get in sales, yeah. I mean, there once in a while I get a sale or two, but you know it's been slow at times. But I know, like when I participated in a few anthologies, that's when the sales kind of racked up, and I think it helped like get a little bit of exposure to my name. So that really that's does good. help. That's good. That's a good uh, <laughs> tip for any authors that are watching to actually um, get involved in these anthologies because not only does your work get read and they might like your style of writing and go out and look at your other books, but uh, it, you'll also have your link for Amazon in that book so they can just uh, go straight away and, and have a look at what else you write. It, like you say, it's really good exposure. So what would you really say is. is the best platform for you social media platform for you for selling your books what works best for you i don't know well i think uh, facebook and twitter i say maybe those are the two main ones that helps and because you know i'm always as i schedule my posts to like uh, if i'm having a sale i'll schedule, schedule a post to promote my work and then of course you know i got a my offer page and then of course I got my own personal page so I'm always promoting my books on there so if any of my family and friends see I got a new book they can go out and purchase it if they want it, a copy for themselves. There's a, here's a quick quick tip in case you didn't know Facebook legally won't allow you to promote anything on your personal page they, and they, they, won't can do actually, do they can actually shut you down if they see a book post on your personal page yeah that's why you have pages author pages and groups and everything i've done it i, I probably still do it without even realizing but there the law came the facebook law came out oh uh, and said no you can't do that i can't believe they're doing that they want to allow you to do that i don't understand it 
and and lately because of us using facebook because they know that we have to use facebook from now on they know that even the big five publishers authors are on facebook promoting because they can't do their book signings anymore for everyone so we're competing not just against indie authors we're competing against the best-selling authors the as well big ones yeah yeah so facebook have took that and you know they do their boosts and they do their ads yeah so yeah. to make you to force you to make an ad or to do a boost on your post they will not allow you to share your post they have a limit and they won't tell you what it is they have a daily limit for how many comments you can do a daily limit for how many shares you can do and a daily limit for how many posts you can make you go over their limit it which we don't know what Facebook it is jail. and you'll either get put in facebook jail or you'll have that lovely black and red warning like i had um threatening to remove your page oh my That's, goodness it's getting the the brick wall that they've been building against us indie authors is getting higher it and really is my opinion and my suggestion which i've told everyone and my clients and everything is that facebook isn't the only platform out there exactly there's plenty of others get away move away from facebook yes go once a week do something online move away from facebook you've got twitter you've got instagram you've got tiktok i use pinterest TikTok. you've got TikTok. Yeah, pinterest you've got uh, linkedin you've got me we that is getting rather popular now mm -hmm. i might take another look at that um yo yo i think it's called um and many others that I, I just can't think of at the moment but there are so many other places to promote your book and another thing to do is not just to do a post that has a cover and a link and a title uh, authors or uh, readers don't want to see them anymore you've got to think out of the box you've got to show that you can write so maybe add an excerpt show that people are enjoying your book add a review you know these are the posts that readers want to see um have you got a book trailer post that book trailer have you got a little narration post that narration they don't want buy my book post anymore so you've got to think out of the box so that's just my little tips and advice for you there uh, carol yeah, so like to that reviews those are important very important very important and another thing to do with the reviews while while you've just mentioned that because of amazon removing them take all of your reviews and copy and paste them onto your website okay if any of them get removed on amazon you have them on your website forever as proof and you direct people to your website to read the reviews rather than amazon and that way it brings traffic to your website as well yeah thanks for the advice i need to do that because i like i said i don't have picky amazon skin lately if they're reviews so that's something i need to do go and copy and paste all copy and paste every i mean you don't do the first the one review the one star two star reviews i uh, couldn't get into it i uh, don't know why i bought this blah 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 you know we get them don't poke don't bother with them no. five and six star reviews get yes. them posted and copied onto your website a lovely page saying place. your book reviews um why are you doing this um show the um the the how many stars you don't even have to put a date show how many stars write the review down keep that and you've got it forever oh yeah definitely that's a good advice to remember when so that's what i needed to do that's what i'm full of if i can remember i could sit here all day and just give you advice after advice after advice because that's what i do for a living but i can't yeah. do anything at the moment so you've got that so you can work on that that's your homework yeah because even though i've been the right for a few years you know i'm still learning new tips along the way to help you so do, any advice you will help no you're welcome i mean i'm still learning i go i go to webinars and uh, you know things change especially nowadays they change like this for the marketplace so i have to keep a, a head on everything to know what's going on otherwise i'm not doing my job right for my clients so 
Um, it's been wonderful chatting with you, uh, Carol, and um, I do wish you. Channel for you too. I wish you all the best with the rest of your series, and uh, let me know if you do jump into another genre. I'd like to uh, have, a, have another You'll chat be the with first you one about to know. that. Brilliant. Okay. You take care. Be safe and uh, stay thank well. You too. You too, and that was great chatting with you. And thank you again. Thank you, honey.